preliminary homage to the Buddha. Let us pay homage to the Buddha. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma samputasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma samputasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma samputasa Today we have with us Dr. Nguyen Yen who will talk about karma and COVID-19. So uh, over to you, Dr. Ng. Good morning. So today we are going to talk about karma and COVID. First, to talk about this subject, we have to uh, have a common understanding of the words karma and COVID-19. So what did the Buddha definition of karma is? He says that the definition of karma is Chetanaham Bhikkave Kamam Vadami meaning intentions. Chetana means intentions. Intentions is karma. Other words for this would be volition. Volition and uh, Bhikkhu Sujato would say choices. So, different uh, words may have a different sort of uh, impact on individual, but karma means intention, and intention also is also another word would be volition. Volition. And another word for volition is choices. Okay, so that is karma. Then we know COVID-19, coronavirus disease, started in 2019. So in a Dharma talk, we always associate, and we always talk about what the Buddha taught. And he always talk about 12 DO, that means 12 dependent conditionality, and he talk about the Four Noble Truths, or which encompass the Noble Eightfold Path. And he also talk about the three characteristics of existence. So we will encompass all of this uh, in today's talk. Now, he says uh, all this happening, all this that is happening, is from conditions. It depending on conditions, that COVID comes about. And this condition uh, starts with ignorance, and then intentions, consciousness, mind, body, contact, feeling, craving, clinging, becoming, and then birth, aging, disease, death, bad and sad, is sadness, agitation, bad and sad. So we always have been uh, asked, what is the cause for COVID? So, how is it associated with karma? Now, COVID is the disease. The cause of a disease is birth. If you have a disease, you only can have a disease if you are born as a human being. Will you have a disease if you are not born into the, as a human being? So the origin of COVID is that you are born. As human beings, uh, born as a human being, and any human being is subjected to all kinds of diseases. All kinds of diseases. 
So do not be surprised if you get a disease because that is what is natural. As long as you are born, you will be faced with different kinds of diseases, be it physical, biological, accidents, no? or whatever social conditions that bring about the disease in that being. So the karma of disease is just being born. So it's not bad karma to have the disease. Because as long as you are born as a human being, you are liable for a disease. So this is the Deva messenger. The Deva messengers have been with us of birth, aging, disease, death. And we have to wake up and listen to these messengers of the Deva. Now, so we say that it's because we are in this human form, in this human form, that's why we have diseases. So the biological agent does not recognize status. Okay, it is colorblind. Yellow, white, black. The viruses just look for food. And the food are the lungs. So they go for anyone, any human being with those receptors. So they are just looking for food for their consumption. Just as human beings uh, go everywhere in the world to look for food, so the viruses are just doing its biological act to look for food. So this is the nature of diseases, that this virus is a biological agent. And it is not because that person is a sinner or has bad karma, then the virus goes to him. The virus does not recognize the uh, uh, young or old, does not recognize the, whether you are a minister or a poor man. It is color blind, race blind, religion blind. So it is a leveler for uh, disease processes. So you must understand uh, that the virus is just a biological agent. Now, so this is disease, the cause of birth, and a biological agent has no, is color blind, blind uh, to all things, uh, all status, etc., age, gender, race, religion. It just wants its food. Okay, and it's not because the person is a sinner or uh, has done bad that he becomes infected. He is in the world and this biological agent is in the world. And when he comes into contact with it, he is most likely to get it. Okay. So we have talked about the origin of disease, okay, the origin of disease, and that here we need to understand that we must not be racially discriminating or religiously discriminating. Okay, now we come to the spiritual part of it. Now, ignorance, mundane ignorance. Because this is a new virus, we won't know too much about it. We have to study and investigate it. The mortality we will only know at the end uh, where you have the total number of infected and then the total number who died. Then you will know the mortality. As now, we do not know the mortality. 
but only we know that it is very contagious and the likelihood of severe diseases and death is there. So for each individual, that possibility of severe disease and death is there. So there is this mindfulness of death that we have to contemplate about in this time. Okay. So you have to contemplate on death. Mindfulness of death. And that mindfulness of death, uh, you have to be vigilant uh, in breathing in and breathing out. Because breathing in, uh, there's a beginning and an end. Breathing out is a beginning and end. So there is rising, falling, there is birth and there is death. Right. So we have to be very mindful of death in these difficult times by looking at the breath too. Or even whatever activities you are doing, like eating. So we have to be very mindful of death because things are uncertain and unstable. So the three characteristics of existence comes where we know that it is anicca, dukkha, and anatta. Anatta especially uh, is beyond your control. Okay, it's beyond control. These are things that happen. But there are certain uh, intentions and volitions that you can possibly uh, uh, control in the sense that you can avoid contact. Uh, avoid contact with the virus. Now, so these three characteristics of existence, uh, anicca, is very, very uh, something that has to be very reflected. So in China, it happened, but now it's like going down. So it peaked and it came down. Elsewhere, it come and it go down. So it is changing, changing all the time. Now we will go into 10.61. So we have mundane knowledge and we have spiritual knowledge. This ignorance is about the Four Noble Truth. And the Four Noble Truth is about suffering, the origin of suffering, you have the cessation of suffering, and then you have the path to the end of suffering. So we have the COVID, the origin of the COVID, the cessation of the COVID, and the path to end the COVID. So similarly, uh, how do we do it? Uh, it must have the Noble Eightfold Path. So the Noble Eightfold Path is the right understanding that there is suffering. Okay? There's the origin, the cessation, and the Noble Eightfold Path. So this is the right understanding. With the right understanding, you must have right thoughts. The right thoughts of renunciation of sensual pleasure non-hatred and non-cruelty. So in a time of difficulties, uh, we have to renounce sense pleasures of singing, dancing, mixing with people. It's not the time for eat, drink and be merry. You have to renounce these sense pleasures to restrain yourself from those things so that you would actually uh, have another better day and be COVID-free. Non-hatred, you must not have this hatred to others or non-cruelty. There are others who have the disease and then they go and spread it around, so knowingly or unknowingly. So, but those who, people who are really cruel will be that they have the disease and they spread it around. So the problem here is that the person who carry the disease may not know that they have the disease. So because of ignorance. Ignorance is you do not know what you do not know. So the person who is infected don't know he is infected and he went about doing his normal things and will infect others. So it, apparently the 
pandemic, BBC says that one person, if he continue to socialize, will infect 77 other people. So of these 77 other people, there will be people who are immune compromised and that there may be the older person with a lot of multiple diseases and then with a, a small whiff of the disease, a small whiff of the virus will overcome their defences. And so we don't want our grannies and our grandpas and the older persons to get the disease and suffer. So there must be social distancing. It's not the time to eat, drink and be merry. You, the people who have such thinking have to grow up. Okay, grow up uh, that this is serious. It's a matter of life and death. You have to discipline yourself from that. So you have to discipline yourself uh, in restraining yourself. And then non-hatred and non-cruelty. You have to be kind. Kind to others by social distancing. Okay, uh? and that you are also kind to yourself because you don't want to survive this and there's no family members around or friends around or that it is decimated the population. So we have to walk the path with the understanding. So this 12DO says that why this ignorance built up says in 1061 and the title of Amkutara Nikaya 1061 is ignorance. He says that although ignorance is from beginningless time, there are causes for it. So there are causes for this ignorance and the cause is the highly misbehaving uncle. So I like acronym. Huh? So this highly misbehaving uncle, what is this highly misbehaving uncle? What does he do? When there are evil friends, when there are evil friends, you don't listen to the Dharma. Listening not to the Dharma. When you do not listen to the Dharma, you lack faith. When you lack faith, you have careless attention. If you have careless attention, huh, you have no mindfulness. No mindfulness and situation awareness. You have no mindfulness, you are unrestrained. And when you are unrestrained, you behave misconduct by body, speech and mind. And when you do misconduct, you have hindrances to your practice. So the hindrances are lust, huh? hatred, Sloth and torpor, restlessness and worry and doubt. And this would add on to your ignorance. And the ignorance, with that ignorance, uh, you have unwholesome thoughts. This unwholesome thoughts uh, is sense, pleasures, cruelty and ill will. And then you go and go about non-social distancing okay eh? and then you meet and try to not knowingly eh, you spread then it will be a whole lot of suffering so this is this is the how it works so even friends eh, people who you, you meet with say less you know, so some teens eh, will be like drinking from the juices in the supermarket or spitting you know, into the mall. So we have heard of local teenagers who are mixing together with evil friends who egg each other on uh, to do evil. Right. So evil friends uh, will not be listening to the true Dharma. They will be mindless 
And then it will add on to this. So we need people who discipline. So if it's not discipline, uh, then the law will discipline these people. But we need to teach, educate the dangers of this. So there is a gratification, no? There's a gratification in doing these things. But we have to tell them the dangers of doing this. If you get it, your whole family might be affected. Right, huh? So it is very important to say the whole nation, the whole world will get affected. Infected, affected and infected. So in the other aspect of it, how to lower the ignorance? You must have good friends. So the Buddha is our good friend. And other sort of friends who tell you to listen to the Dharma. When you listen to the Dharma, you will have faith. When you have faith, you have careful attention. Not to go near others when you are sick. Right, yeah? And have a, keep a social distancing. Then you will have mindfulness and you will restrain yourself from misconduct, then you won't have any hindrances and your ignorance will reduce. Then there will have less suffering. So how you explain in this 12DO this way? Why this, this suffering, how we can actually reduce this suffering? So we, I explain from this uh, this teachings the Buddha gave us. Now, this is Anguttara Nikaya 10.61. It tells of how ignorance increase and how ignorance can decrease. So ignorance is also a conditional thing. It can rise and it can fall. Now I would like to talk about Anguttara Nikaya 3.56. You now contemplate on what I have spoken. Now I've gone through sort of social hygiene, right here. Yeah? I now want to talk about depopulation. The title for this is Depopulation. Depopulation means the population goes down. And in this sutta, the Buddha was talking to a Brahmin. The Brahmin asked him, he says that previously, the villages and the cities and the capitals are very close. So close that the cocks can jump from one to the other. And the density of people are so great. How come now the population has decreased? Then the Buddha says this. He says the population has decreased because there is illicit loba, lust. Greed and wrong dharma. No pandemics uh, will bring about depopulation. So there's a sutta that talk about depopulation, and this is the sutta that talk about depopulation. He says, when men become lustful. Illicit lustfulness, unwholesomeness, no greed and wrong dharma, then there will be killing. Men will take up weapons and kill each other. So by killing, you have depopulation. It's because of greed and wrong dharma. Then he says, then there is poor, so we now reflect, uh, 
there's a lot of killing in the world, right? There are a lot of wars and violence in the world. The Spanish flu was in 1918. 500 million will, were infected. Singapore, about 5 million. Uh, they have 500 million people were infected. And 100 million died. And when did the Spanish flu occur? After the World War I. And World War I, what? They are fighting violence, men against men, brothers against brothers. Right? So there's a lot of killing, a lot of violence. And then they say the climate will change. There will have little rain. And then because of little rain, there is less grains. And then we have famine. With famine, there's not enough to feed. And so there's depopulation. The last of it, he says, is the yakas. The yakas are demons of the lowest plane or they are part of this staff in the four great kings realm, the lowest. But yet they have a lot of power. These yakas uh, let loose wild spirits. They let loose wild spirits because they see, you know, they see all this is happening. They also participate and cause about depopulation of people. So there were, so there's killing. So we must think of, in the world, there should be less killing. We are all brothers. We have this human form, and with this human form, we are brothers and sisters. How can you kill your brother and sisters over views, over, you know, water or whatever, or over money? How can you kill brothers uh, and sisters over money, over views, over getting something in the future? So, it is very important that no senses come back, that there sh should be brotherhood. So we have brotherhood, you would not have all this depopulation. Little rain, climate change. You know, climate change is getting hotter. So we also have to sort this out. Because man has overused the resources. Right. And the yakas, how to appease the yakas? You know, yakas uh, do not care, you know? And yakas uh, and the other realms, uh, the other realms, they don't interfere with each other politics. The Brahma doesn't tell the yaka, hey, stop it, you know? And they don't listen, right? Huh? And these yakas, uh, you will know they don't listen when you read uh, Udana, Discourse on Moonlight. This discourse on Moonlight shows that the Yaka do not bother or care about who they are hitting out against. They just want to hit out against these human beings. Eh? They just want to hit out. And how did how this Sutta tells discourse on the moonlight. So on one moonlight night, Venerable Sariputta was with Venerable Mogalana. And uh, Venerable Sariputta had just shaved his head. And it was like shining in the moonlight. Then here there was these two yakas, and they were going north to south. The first yaka saw Venerable Sariputta. And then he say, hey, I want to give that wall-headed, uh, shining shaveling uh, a slap on the head. Then the second yaka said, don't, 
he's an eminent ascetic. Don't do that. Then the second, then the first said, I want to do it. You know, evil. Huh? I want to do it. They said, don't, don't do it. Then the, he carried on. And the first yaka then ran uh, to hit Venerable Sariputta. See, yaka don't care. Venerable Sariputta, he also want to hit. And then when he hit, I say the force, uh, when he hit the force, the yaka has so much power. When he hit it, he says uh, an elephant would be felt and or half the mountain will blow off. So that is how powerful one slap by the yaka is. So when the yaka let loose the wild spirits, uh, you can see uh, that there is a force. And Mogalana witnessed all this. And Mogalana, when he saw the yaka hit Venerable Sariputta, he quickly go to Venerable Sariputta and says, Are you okay? How are you? Oh, I just have a little headache. Then Maha Mogalana was saying, Wow, do you know you have just been hit by a yaka? And this yaka would have, you know, toppled a big elephant. What a little man uh, like you, uh, I mean, it would be like, die. But then he didn't. And that, that amount of force, he says, can half a mountain. So much force that like, it blow off the mountain. So, Venerable Sariputta then says, Mahamogalana, hey, I can't even see a mud spirit. You can see a yaka? So this Venerable Sariputta was so in admiration for Mahamogalana's psychic powers. But here we can see that, of course, the yaka, once he slapped Venerable Sariputta, he then said, I'm burning, I'm burning. And then he went to the lowest hell. So yaka went to the lowest hell. So yakas who hit out at any Aryans uh, will go to the lower realms. So he, they would not have the powers of the higher realms. They will go straight down to the lower realms. So if there are any yakas around, then you listen very carefully that this were the demise of yakas because evil will get bad vipaka. So we know that yakas, wild spirits, they have a lot of force. And all this grew and grew because of greed, lust, and wrong dharma. So here we can do anything about this. Uh, so how to overcome unwholesomeness is to have wholesomeness. And what is wholesomeness is sila, samadhi, and panya. And panya must be discernment. Must be discernment. You must be wise. So the Buddha told us in Kalama Sutta, if the scriptures say like that, you must also question. Traditions say like that, you must also question. So if you say, we are not invincible, we are subjected to biological agents. How, how, how many people do you need to meet to get the COVID? How many? You just need to meet one person and you are inverted, finished, maybe finished. So you need one person. So when authorities tell you 250, 500, you have to think right. You only need one person to infect you. And the problem is we don't know that one person has, has the virus or not. So that's why there is this lockdown. When people stay in their home, and if you do not know that you have the virus, when you have the symptoms, then you go and seek treatment. So it is very important that you have social distancing is so important. So whatever it is, uh, we have to practice uh, 
what is available and what is available being told to us, we must also think about it. We must also uh, be discerning. So we have traditions and the traditions that is coming up will be Qingming. The Qingming uh, does not mean uh, that only when you go to a place uh, would you be venerating your ancestors. And when there is uh, so many people gathering together, the chances of the COVID is very high. So we want to reduce this. We don't want to stick to rites and rituals. We must be discerning that there is a high chance of meeting the COVID in a crowded place. So you have to be discerning. So the best respect, the best gratitude that you can give to your ancestors is to practice not killing, not stealing, not uh, sexual misconduct, not false speech, malicious speech, not gossipy speech, right? no harsh speech, and no wrong speech. So all this wrong speech, telling people otherwise uh, to gather or whatever, so it is very important that we do not take intoxicants. Okay? Intoxicant, so there are five precepts. So we have to keep our five precepts. We have to meditate. When you meditate, uh, then we have the merits from keeping sila and meditation. Then we can pass our merits uh, with our departed relatives. It is not just going there as a symbol of yearly. We have them in our hearts. And we, every day we do uh, merits, we will pass the merits to them, to devas and the departed ancestors. So that they need merits, uh, they, we have merits to give. We don't want to get demerit points you know, by doing demerit things, by doing unwholesome things. So we have to be discerning. We have to use our discernment. So here, we have to uh, know that we have to practice sila, samadhi, panya and do the wholesome acts. Okay. So when we say karma, we have talked about uh, intentions. So we must be very clear of our intentions before we do an act. While we do the act, after we do the act. So you must be thinking, you must be discerning. So whatever act you are going to do, you must be very clear whether it will cause suffering to yourself, to another, and others. So whatever act or whatever policy that you are going to give out uh, as leaders, uh, you have to think, is there a chance of causing suffering? Is there a cause of a higher chance of causing suffering to yourself, to others, and all in the society. So this is what we have to think about as individual, as in the family, in the society, in the world. So the decision making, uh, the intentions are very important. So the intentions, uh, the Buddha says, there's wholesome and unwholesome. And all these intentions is geared towards right understanding. Is it going to cause more suffering? If it's going to cause more suffering, then refrain from doing it. And the act is not carried out. Before you act, you have to think, does it cause suffering? Does it cause more diseases? Okay, to myself, to others in society, if so, don't do it. Then you do something uh, 
what you do ah, social distancing, washing hands, keeping healthy in the mind and the body, huh? then these are wholesome things. Be generous. Huh? This generosity uh, is being generous with your spirit, no? not with your physical sort of uh, presence, but in the mental spirit, in the loving kindness. So this wholesome, unwholesome, this is one aspect of intention. Then the other aspect of the intention is that it is prompted uh, by oneself or others. So when we do something, uh, it's prompted by yourself, you discern it out, or by others. So others uh, is something that I always talk about, Mogalana's wife. Mogalana's wife did not want to care for Mogalana's parents uh, in a long ago lifetime because the parents were blind and have a lot of caregiving that the wife have to do. One day, uh, he, she's tired of taking care of the parents, the blind parents. Then he, she whispered into Mogalana's ears, kill them, kill them. Go kill them, uh, just, you know. Uh, then I don't have to take care anymore. So when, when he, this voice uh, prompted by another, keep going round and round, like take the rubbish out, take the rubbish out, then you just blindly take the rubbish out. You know, so when people tell you do things, uh, you just blindly do. So one day, in order to appease all this nagging, he brought his two blind parents into the forest. And because they were blind, he then hit them and say that, hey, there are robbers, you know, trying to get things. So when the parents heard that robbers attacking for their wealth, then the parents shouted to Mogalana, run, son, run. And when Mogalana heard that, he just stopped. And then he couldn't, the injuries were so bad, huh? that the parents died. And he went to aeons in hell. But the action is done by oneself. You suffer the consequences. Even it's prompted by your wife. So this prompting is very, so you don't want to mix with, you know, your, your, your wife supposed to be your best friend, a good friend, huh? but if your wife has evil intentions, uh, unwholesome intentions, then you may get infected. But you must always know to be detached, be discerning. So we have a lot of bad fellows, right? We have we heard in the in the around uh, our Southeast Asia there are bad fellows. Najib has his bad fellow, you know, different different uh no. People have their big fellows and they listen. So it's very important uh, that the close and dear one tells you things you have to digest and see whether you want to walk in the proper direction. And if you have the Buddha in your mind, the Dharma in your mind, and the Arya Sangha in your mind, you will not walk the wrong direction. Because you will be your own refuge no one will be your own refuge, you know. Your, lo your loved one uh, may give you wrong advice. So you are your own refuge. You are your own island. The Dharma is your island. The Dharma is your refuge. So we have to be our own refuge. The Dharma has to be your refuge. And you use the Dharma to make decisions. Okay? Before and during and after. So these are important. So it's prompted by oneself or others. What you do, uh, you will have the vipaka. Okay? So prompted by... Okay, then we have by body, speech, 
and mind. Of course, the mind is the foremost. The mind will tell the body what to do. The mind will tell the speech uh, what to talk. So, mind is foremost. So, we have to develop and cultivate our minds. It's so important. So, when we develop and cultivate our minds, then we are clear. When we are clear, then we can think very, very uh, discerningly. Okay. So there are gods, and that there are gods. So they have the, they say that all you have to do is to depend on gods, okay, and that the illness will not come to you. But here we know uh, that gods help those who help themselves. Gods help those who help themselves. So if one cannot just depend on the God will save you. You need to have uh, discernment. So God say, God help those who help themselves. Then there are those who believe that all this is fated. So there are psychic readers uh, that in uh, says neutral, whatever, and then there is this uh, uh, Seville Brown or something that you see circulating in the WhatsApp that they predicted in the year 2020 there will be a pandemic of the uh, disease affecting the lungs. So there is this uh, pronostication of fate. So in the time of the Buddha, there were also teachers Makali Kosala was one who said that everything is fated. You don't have to do anything. Everything is fated. So when everything is fated, uh, like this pandemic will come and then pandemic will go. This is fated. But the Buddha says that if you have such an attitude that things are fated, uh, then you will not exert yourself. Because it's fated, ma. and why should I change my fate? So the Buddha says this is the worst to say that it is fated uh, and don't do anything about it. So the Buddha says that you must have the right effort. You must have a tremendous effort. So the effort is that you have to prevent the COVID. And if there is the COVID, you have to abandon it. That means you have to cure it. You prevent it, you make it go away. So this is the effort that you have to do. And that you have to improve the wholesomeness is that you improve health and you flourish health. It's just the right effort. Remove evil, do good. So this right effort uh, is, a, is an effort that you have to do as individual, as a country, as a nation, as a world. So China has shown us what effort has to be put in. It cannot be la di da It cannot be done like not seriously. You have to put in so much effort. Then you can eradicate. So the Buddha said, strive. We strive so that we can be purified. Avoid evil, do good, purify ourselves. Purify ourselves of defilements, unwholesomeness. So this right effort eh, is very important in the Noble Eightfold Path. 
And diligence is very, very important. Diligence, uh, that means it is for the long haul. As long as you are alive, you have to be diligent. You have to act in the, the path. And this right effort uh, is uh, important in addition to the rest of the Noble Eightfold Path. Then there are people who believe uh, that this is just a materialistic world. There is no rebirth. Even in the uh, Buddhism, uh, there is secular Buddhism who believe that this is just this life. After this life, there is no more. So this is nihilism. So when people believe that the life is just a materialistic world and all you have to do is to get a lot of materials and that after this life there's nothing else then they would have no reason to do wholesome they would lose they will lose because there's a tendency here in this life to do unwholesome things for their own benefits so they win not they lose out in this life and if there is a next life they also lose so nihilism and eternalism the buddha says no no you must walk the middle path so these are some of the views of ancient times uh, from the time of the buddha the teachers you know, who have, don't believe in karma. But there is karma. There is intentions. We will go uh, according to our karmic inclination. All this wealth will not go with us. So there's this Rata Pala Sutta that the world is unstable. The world is unstable now, right? And that the world, uh, you have no shelter, unsheltered. When you have the disease, you suffer the pain, you suffer the breathlessness. Nobody can take, you know, that breathlessness away. You know, you can have some aids to it, but the symptoms of breathlessness, you have to experience it. So there's no shelter. And then you will die with nothing. This one we can predict. You know, we don't need this pronostication every one of us will die and then we will die with nothing but what thing we have is our inclinations the inclinations to do wholesome our inclina all our inclination to do unwholesome so this is the inclinations that will bring us to the next becoming so the Buddha says no more no more if you see the danger of suffering and since things are all impermanent any realm is impermanent and any realm even divine is impermanent so do not contact that rebirth because only with rebirth you have suffering and they say you know every hundred years uh, or even uh, they have this pandemics and that the people are slaves uh, because they are insatiable craving they run round and round and round uh, because they are craving for a lot of things so they are tainted by the virus of sense pleasures of views of ignorance of becoming and then when they are tainted, uh, they get back into this suffering again and again. So, I think uh, this is all I have to say for today. And I summarize it uh, to say that the origin of suffering is ignorance. And the origin of ignorance uh, is evil, asso evil association and that there is lack of four foundations of mindfulness and unrestrained. So that's ignorance and that there is also the 
other worlds that you know, can bring about depopulation and they do not regard good or bad. They will just depopulate if there is so much ah dharma, wrong dharma, lust and uh, greed. And we have to be very concerned with the practice of volition. A volition of our intentions and that whether you are prompted by others or by yourself and by your body, speech and mind, your volitions. Most important, you must have the right view, right understanding of the Four Noble Truths. If you have the wrong view, you will have the wrong intentions. And the wrong intentions will bring you to the wrong path. And the wrong path will give you a great deal of suffering. So we must listen and do the due uh, practice. So the Buddha has said, you know, seclusion. So now you have to practice seclusion. So that you practice your sila, your samadhi, and then so that your panya will grow to overcome the problems of suffering. So we come about maybe a few minutes before 12. Any questions for those that are present now here? Thank you, Dr. Ng, for the uh, enlightening talk. Uh, there's one question or two questions here. Is there an element of karma if I get COVID-19 infection? Oh, I've just uh, spoken right uh, in the beginning. I said the, there is no association uh, with that you are, have bad karma when you have the COVID. We have said that the cause of COVID uh, is because you are born. You are born as a human being. Just as you know, this born as a human being, you are subjected to all kinds of diseases that present themselves in, your, in that time. So there is not, so not only for COVID, any disease, if you have a stroke, a heart attack, you know, if you have uh, certain diseases, it's not about bad karma that you have them. When a child is, has Down syndrome or autistic, uh, it's not bad karma. You have to see that it is just the conditions. The conditions that bring about this disease rather than saying that it is bad karma. So in the time of Buddha, there was a believer in bad karma. And the Buddha says, how do you know what is the evidence that I have done bad in my previous lives? And how do you know what bad you have done in this life? Have you, do you know, you know? So the thing is that you may know what you have done bad in this life, but you do not know what bad you have done in previous lives. So if a psychic tell you you have done such and such, are psychics, they can see wrongly also. And why should one believe in psychics? So we have the, the uh, sutta called what Brahma does not know. And Brahma does not know where consciousness uh, do not have this, the elements do not have a foot on consciousness. So Brahma doesn't know. The realms of higher realms don't know. Even the person, the monk, who from the earthly realm went up all the way 
to ask Brahma this question. And Brahma said, it is your problem that when there was a Buddha there, you came all the way up, you bypassed the Buddha and come and asked the Brahma. You know, a question that the Buddha can answer. So even though he has psychic powers, he is still ignorant. So here we want to say that the only karmic inheritance we know, we have enough merits to be reborn as a human being. And so we must make use of our merits of being a human being eh, to overcome the suffering, to know suffering as it is. So it is, you do not sort of weigh yourself down eh, with this unnecessary factor, an unnecessary burden to say that you have done bad. So you ask yourself, have you done bad in this life? If you've done bad in this life, then don't do any more. Desist, restrain. And that you do not know what we have done in the past lives. Do not believe even if people tell you what you have done in the past lives. The past is over. You don't go back. Your toilet has been flushed. It is a new beginning. So being a human being, we must make use of our time as a human being to practice the Dharma. So there is no uh, sort of, I've emphasized uh, that we don't correlate the disease with the karma. Thank you, Dr. Mm, there are follow-up questions. For those uh, who would like to ask questions, please write in the comment section. A follow-up question on the COVID-19 is, how can we advise a close family member who is ignorant and keeps going out despite the COVID situation? How do we advise our close family members? Okay, so this is uh, ignorance. So ignorance requires education. And the most important uh, advice uh, is that you have to ask the gratification and the danger. So the Buddha always says, uh, you weigh, you weigh yourself. Okay, you weigh yourself. So, so the gratification of going out is to gratify the senses, right? So, if he knows maths, uh, then you say we just, and when you talk, you just talk mindfully. Because uh, many people have their views. So you just say that uh, gratification of that contact. So the contact is with friends. Right? So uh, if being with friends, they are happy. Can you still be happy with friends but not in physical contact? You can do Zoom or video conferencing. So you have to say you can gratify. Why is that so good to be, you know, in close physical contact? Then you say there's a danger, right? With the physical contact. So the danger is that you don't know whether that person is infected or not. So we all have known uh, the studies done that one person with just a flu itself can infect so many other people. And that the danger uh, is that if you carry the virus, uh, you may bring about the demise of your older relatives in the house. So this is advice you have to give. You have to tell them the dangers and uh, uh, these dangers. Once they see the dangers, and if they still want to play with fire, what can you do? So you have to develop equanimity. So then it depends. Oh, you have some other place to go and stay? Maybe you go there. And because you also have to, there are so many people in this house. Or that there are so many rooms in this house, you know. But then there is all this cleaning that has to be done when you are together. So there is the danger which must be emphasized. So the Buddha always says gratification and danger of all these 
contacts. So you don't want to touch. It's the same thing, right? So the sense gratification of sense pleasures of the five senses or even mentally stimulating of the sixth sense. So you see, this is the virus, you know. If you go near, you enjoy too much, you get into problem. So then there is the sense pleasures, then there are views. You have certain views, uh, if you have certain views, and if that person has a view, uh, it's my karma that I have COVID. I must have done bad before. Or that if you think yourself this way, and you think the other person that way, then there's a judgment. When you think like that, you become very negative. What have I done? What have I done? Then you will like wallow in your, uh, you know, your sadness or your depression. So you're sad. So you, although you may not be, you know, although you may have the COVID, but then you add on the mental dart. So you have both. So you just have physical, just physical, not mental. So you have this view, you have, uh, uh, you discriminate against another. So you, if you have, you have this view about yourself, you become very depressed. And then you have a view about another person, this is your bad karma. Then you have a judgment, a person is lesser. So you have this racialistic slurs, Chinese virus, or you are China, you're from China, you bring the virus to this country. So they have this thinking, very negative. So when you have such a wrong view, you have wrong intention, and you have wrong speech, and you have wrong action. So people have wrong speech, you say, Chinese virus. Then you have wrong action, then they hit up, hit another, uh, you know, a Chinese, when he doesn't have a virus. I heard of some Singaporean in London got hit up because he was a Chinese. So action, so this is wrong speech, wrong action, and then wrong living. You are living wrongly. Oh. <laughs> okay, is that answered? So you must just talk about dangers. If you, after you talk about dangers, you can't change his mind. It's just, you have to be equanimous. Then you say, oh. These are the conditions. If you want to still go out, maybe you stay in hotel. <laughs> After you get it, uh, you quarantine yourself. Uh, right? So it's a lot of work. So why, why bother to have so much problems, right? Okay, any other question? Uh, Dr. Ng, I think some are unaware of being uh, even though they, are, they don't have symptoms, they think they do not have the virus infection. So they, are, uh, they can go ahead and enjoy themselves. Um, so there is misunderstanding that the COVID-19 is only infectious when um, you have the symptoms like breathlessness and fever. Okay, so this is not SARS. La. SARS, you know, you have most likely you have fever, then you have the SARS. But there is known already that there can be 14 days incubation and still infectious. So uh, this is actually quite known knowledge, you know. In fact, there is this information overwhelm uh, that this is like, they keep on telling you that's why you have to stay at home after you come back from another country. Because the another country you may be infected at least you know, there is at least 14 days you must stay in your stay at home, quarantine at home. Another question is about yakas, uh, mm -hmm. about how we can get rid of yakas or reduce their influence. Yakas is a realm. You, we, we, we don't interfere with their, them, you know. And uh, the, we are just saying uh, that uh, there is this sutta and that uh, we just do our part. So uh, we, we just sort of like, we have to do our wholesome part as human beings that we are living uh, in the, on earth with animals, with other beings. We have to coexist with other beings 
So we have to be friendly to other beings, humans and animals alike. We shouldn't be looking at animals as food eh, too much. They also have a right to living. So, you know, with this that happened in Wuhan, I think uh, the Chinese government has looked into sort of abolishing the wildlife trade and that uh, trying to separate the animals from the humans. Okay, yakas are just demons uh, in the uh, in the realms uh, of the four great kings. They do their policing or whatever work. So the only thing uh, we have to do our human duties. We have to be humane and that we have to reduce our lust, our greed, our wrong views. If this reduces, uh, the yakas will come and disturb us. So we have to practice Sila Samadhi Panya. So this is the only way of self-practice. When we guard ourselves, we guard others. Any more questions? I think the person is um, about talking about Yaka is thinking that the Yaka is attached to him. Attached to him? <laughs> They are more powerful, they won't attach to human beings. They won't get gratification from human beings. Okay, if there's no more questions, uh, last, last chance, uh, everyone thanking uh, Dr. Ng for your sharing <laughs> and uh, being at BF today. So before we close, we would like to dedicate merits to all sentient beings, uh, acquired merits. Uh, Brother Jerry will share the dedication of merits. Dedications of merits. Etavata chamehi sampadam punya sampadam sabe deva anumonanchu Sapa Sampati Sidiya Etavata Cha Amehi Sampadam Punya Sampadam Sabe Buta Anumonantu Sapa Sampati Sidiya Etavata Cha Amehi Sampadam punya sampadam Sabe sata anumodan tu Sabe sampati sidiya Dedication of Marys Idami nati nam hotu sukita hontu natayo Idami nati nam hotu sukita hontu natayo Idami nati nam hotu sukita hontu natayo End of service dedications I dedicate samaris which I have accumulated to the cultivation of my mind in order to bring happiness and benefits to all sentient beings. I dedicate the merits to my parents, children, spouse, relatives, friends, colleagues, and my adversaries, wishing them long life, good health, happiness, and prosperity. May we never part from the triple gem, and may always walk the path towards enlightenment. Araham Samma Sambudo Bhagawa Buddham Bhagawatam Abhiwademi Swagato Bhagawata Dhammo Dhammam Namasami Sup 
Pati Pano Bhagavato Savakasango Sangkam Namami Sadu, 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 sadu. Ay, 